Hello, my name is Brett Martin and I want to welcome you to the Merchant Cash Advance industry. This is one of the most exciting industries on earth since the mortgage industry has pretty much gone by the wayside. Oh sure, there's still a lot of people out there that will tell you that the mortgage industry and the real estate industry is going great, but I can tell you that the number of people that are pouring into this industry from the mortgage industry is exponential. So it's nice to have you interested in this. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe to you what the merchant cash advance industry actually is. We're not just a processing industry, we're a cash advance industry also. And one of the terms that you'll hear if you stay in this industry long enough is the term factor rate or an abbreviation of FR. Okay? So I want to start with factor rate. It's a little different than interest rate. In fact, some people say substantially different, but it's not difficult to comprehend. Here it is in a nutshell. Standard interest rate on a loan is typically based off of APR. So as an example, a 12% annual interest rate would be 12%, duh. But an APR versus a factor rate is different. So here's a factor rate. A factor rate of 12% does not exist. It's actually called a 1.12 factor rate annually. And the way that works is that if somebody takes out a merchant cash advance through this industry whether it's attached to a processing machine or comes out on a daily basis just out of their checking account as an ACH and I'll get over I'll go over that here in a little bit and what happens is is they're going to be charged a 1.12 factor rate over the life of the loan so let's say or or, or advance whatever you want to call it these are loans in California advances everywhere else in 49 states. So what this means is, is this advance or loan could be paid back over a five year period and it's still only going to cost a 1.12 factor rate or over a five month period and it's still going to be a 1.12 factor rate. And here's the way it works. If we advance someone $100,000, they're going to pay back $112,000. Stands to reason. So, again, let's talk about whether it's annualized or whether it's over the course of five, six, seven years. The way these advances work is. They only pay back while the business owner is making money. If the business owner has a, a tendency to have sales that are plummeting, then at that point we're taking less money each day out of their account towards what is owing. If sales are going up, then we take more out of their account each day towards the balance owing. And the way that works is this. We're going to put a lien on their bank account or on their credit card processing machine, one or the other, and we're going to take a percentage of their daily sales. So if we are going to take, as an example, 20% of their daily sales and they do $1,000 a day in sales, then $200 is going to be applied that day towards the balance owing of $112,000 in this case. So make a, make a couple more examples for you so that you can understand this more fully. I want to tell you a little bit more about myself. I own a company called Subprime Business Funding in the past. I've owned companies called the Merchant Cash Advance Industry, Strategic Prosperity Group, the Business Loan Alternative Company, Merchant Cash Advance Company, and you might ask yourself why I've owned these organizations within this industry. 
The biggest reason that I've made these changes to finally arriving at the subprime business funding company is because I got sick and tired of being in a situation where people were saying to me as ISOs, independent sales organizations, I'll go over that a little bit more here, you know, hey, I thought we'd get a better rate for my client. Hey, my client wants a better rate. These loans and advances are not friendly. So if you can't stomach the fact that these are expensive, rest assured you can't be in this industry to sell this product. Now you might say to me, hey, that sounds rude. These are rude. So let's just get past the little, you know, feeling good feelings, hopping through the, you know, field, picking daisies, and understand one another that these loans and this industry is for people who can stomach selling higher interest rates, or in this industry's case, factor rates, because these are advances or loans that are given to clients, i.e. business owners, who are not able to get loans elsewhere. So what I want to go over with you now is I want to go over the terms of the merchant cash advance industry. One of the terms that's standard in this industry is FR, abbreviated, or factor rate. So if you've watched my video prior, you know what factor rate is. I gave a definition of that. Let's also take a look at percentage of sales, or specified percentage. You'll see that on your contract on almost, in almost all cases. So specified percentage. And a specified percentage is exactly this. It's a very simple definition. We're going to take a specified amount each day of their daily sales to pay back what is owing. So as an example, like I, I showed earlier on, if we're going to take 10% of their daily sales in a specified percentage that day, and they do, let's say, $1,000, that day in business, then $100 is taken out of the account and swept over to us to put towards the loan amount or advance amount that's owing. So we'll go over a couple more of the abbreviations or terms so you're well aware of what those are. We've got an MCA, which you know, you should understand by now, but it's called a merchant cash advance. These are not loans unless, of course, it's in the state of California, and then it has to be loaned because of a class action suit that took, took place down there some years back. So, merchant cash advance or an ACH. Now, ACH is automatic clearinghouse. What that is, is this would be a fixed amount daily that we would take out of the bank account based off their checking and, and, and cash that comes in that day versus a processing machine. So if the, if the business doesn't take credit cards, then we can always go ahead and do a fixed ACH, which is automa automated clearinghouse advance, and that would be a fixed daily amount that we would take out. So other terms that you would deal with in this industry, factor rate. And we're using an example a little bit ago of $112,000 as a payback on $100,000 borrowed. So let's go ahead and use a different situation. Let's use $50,000 borrowed or advanced to the merchant or business owner, whatever you want to call it. So we're giving them $50,000 and in return they're going to pay us back let's say 20%. So they're going to pay us $10,000 back. They're going to owe $60,000. Now that $60,000 in a standard loan would be amortized out over a period like five years or seven years or 10 years or maybe 15 and even 20 years in commercial lending instances like what banks give them for standard APR type loans. In our case, what we're using here is a factor rate, 
And in this case, the factor rate was 20, not percent, just factor rate. So 1.20 factor rate versus 20% or 20 percent. So again, with this loan, the way they're going to pay this back is we're going to take a percentage of each one of their daily sales, okay? And if we're going to take a percentage, let's say that 13% of their daily sales to pay back the 60 grand, then if the sales are $1,000 a day for that business, then we're going to take $130 and apply it against the balance owing that is due. So obviously what you do is you take this number and you divide it into here and you can tell yourself or the client how many days they're going to have that they have to pay this back. Now it's not a fixed amount. If for some reason sales go up, we're still going to take 13%, but let's say this number becomes $2,000 that they did in daily sales that day. We're going to take 13% of that, which is double, so $260, and we're going to apply that towards the balance owing. What days will sales go up, as an example? Mother's Day, Father's Day, if it's a restaurant. Or let's say it's summertime, and we're out and, and lending to somebody in Yellowstone National Park. Those months are typically June, July, August, September that the sales go up. So we won't raise the amount that we're going to take out each day, the fixed amount. But what will happen is, is if sales go up, then this dollar go amount goes up. And what ends up happening is we take a larger percentage of their daily sales in comparison to what they are in a down market. So I hope you understand that. It should make sense to you. Some additional terms you'll deal with is RTR, and that is called the right to retrieve. Okay, so you've got two amounts you're going to see on a contract that come to you for your borrower. One is the amount that they're going to get from us, whether that be an advance or whether that be a loan, okay? And the other is, is how much will they be paying back? In the industry's case, it's called RTR, the right to retrieve. We have a right to retrieve the amount that they owe us. Let's say the factor rate is 1.30, so we're going to retrieve, or have a right to retrieve, $130,000. So that's what they're going to be paying back to us. So you can see we take 100 or 130,000 minus 100 is the $30,000 that they will be paying us that is from or derived from the factor rate. Hi there, this is Brett Martin. I want to talk to you today about Marketing an MCA or an ACH, which for all actuality, or in, in all actuality, are the one and the same. An MCA, if you haven't watched my prior video, is a merchant cash advance, and an ACH is an, a, a, an advanced clearinghouse loan. And these loans are both attached, or, or advances, whatever you want to call them, are attached to either a processing machine or the bank account with checks and cash. So I want to talk to you about a moment about marketing this product. The markets are huge for this. You can call in restaurants, you can call in hotels, you can call in stores, you can call in bowling alleys, but let's talk about some of the stuff that you can't call in, call on. That'd probably be the easiest thing. The first and foremost thing to think about is that if someone wants a standard loan and is expecting to hand in tax returns and get you know live in a live in a drudgery environment where it takes 60 to 90 to 120 days to get a denial or an approval and get an incredibly low interest rate then this is not the industry for them not whatsoever 
This industry is set up for higher factor rates or interest rates if we're in California because in California these are called loans not advances. So where to market this product? Like I mentioned a minute ago, where not to market is really the place to start. We don't do home-based businesses. So we're not giving these advances to someone who writes off a tenth of their home each year for the home-based business that they've printed off business cards for on their friendly printer at their house and they live off of you know three or four thousand dollars a year these are not the types of businesses that we lend to we lend to legitimate businesses that have a storefront as I mentioned like a store or a gas station or a hotel or a restaurant bowling alley pizza parlor and so on I hope I get my point across there Many times that people bring loans into me, you know, it's an Amway guy who made $1,600 last year and he's going to college full time and he's 57 years old. That's not the type of business we're looking for, not by any means. It's a legitimate business that's in business with the storefront because we are going to call the lease holder and ask them what the likelihood is of that tenant continuing to stay on there. In addition, we're going to take a look at the lease and make sure there's time left on the lease for them to stay in business to pay us back. So marketing the product, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go out there and market to businesses direct and just say, this is what I do. I sell money at a higher rate than the banks and we do the loans and the advances that banks don't do. So going to direct to businesses is a great market yet interestingly enough most of the ISOs that come into my organization or prospective ISOs that interview me don't wanna call direct that's one of the big things they want leads provided so let's talk about leads provided for a moment we have two lead providers we don't make any money on it I just recommend that you use them that work wonderfully for us and on your behalf you have to pay for those, I don't pay for them. And no one in the industry pays for them either. And your ROI, your return on investment will be huge, substantially huge. In fact, the average commission in this industry is somewhere around three grand. So you can make this lead money back very easily. The leads, by the way, will come to you and you'll actually have them forwarded right to your phone and when you pick the phone up, you'll actually answer it and the, the merchant will be on the other line and you can go over what their needs are and what they're trying to, to, to accomplish. So leads are a good source, going direct to the business is a good source and then in addition, in addition a lot of my ISOs go to the banks and what they do is they get their turn downs. So they go in, they introduce themselves as a resource that can that that a client of theirs can have access to in the event that their client gets denied whether it's a US bank a Wells Fargo a credit a, a, a credit union or key bank or any other type of bank most of those banks 82 to 88 percent of the time are used to telling business owners no we're used to saying yes 82 to 88 percent of the time so one of, the, one of the main reasons why you want to come into this industry is because there's a tremendous need for this money out there. Very few sources out there are providing business owners money at this time. So that said, banks are a great lead source. You know, people always say to me, well, how do you do it? Introduce yourself. It's not rocket science. Shake this person's hand on the other end. Go in and ask for a loan officer that specializes in, in business loans. Introduce yourself. Don't expect to get something that moment in time. There's no reason why you can't look at this and say, hey, I'm in this for at least 60, 90 days. Let me give this a try. You can come back next week. From my perspective, I think you should go in once a week. By the time you've been in two or three times, like myself and many of my other ISOs, they'll start to give you their turn downs. They're certainly not going to just give them to you immediately. And it certainly wouldn't make sense for you to go in there every single solitary day. Nor would it make sense if that's true, then to, then to do the opposite of this and go in once a year and expect them to get business. So I hope you fully understand how to market banks. So we've got banks, we've got lead sources, 
two of them that I can introduce you to. And in addition, you can go out and you can call on the business owner direct. We also have Chambers of Commerce. That's the funny thing is, I used to own a huge mortgage company and what's so funny is most of my people join the Chamber of Commerce or they join the Rotary. So why don't, why don't the people in this industry join the Chamber of Commerce or the Rotary? Well, I'll tell you from my perspective why, and I've got about 3,000 ISOs under contract throughout the country. The number one reason is, is because people seem to think nowadays that you can make money without even having to get out of bed. I mean, we've been led to believe that. This is a sales job. You still have to get out of bed. You still have to go call on these organizations. You still need to build your business. So calling on the chamber or being part of the chamber or part of the rotary is a huge opportunity for you because each one of those business owners in there is trying to figure out how to stay in business each and every day. One of which, one of the ways in which they do that is they get loans or advances through organizations like us. So we've got the Chamber, we've got the Rotary, I've got flyers and business cards that I can provide for you, at least the templates and you can have them printed out. So they're, they're tried and true. They come over a, a tremendous amount of experience through a lot of people. We've shortened them down and abbreviated them. Brevity is key whenever you hand out a flyer or you hand out a business card, but they need to be explanatory. So I hope you understand that Chamber and the Rotary could be a viable source for you in regards to your business. So what I want you to do is I want to talk to you now about the process itself. What happens to, an, to a merchant cash advance once you hand it in? and in addition how it funds and we go from point A to point Z. So here we go, point A to point Z, the process. Once an application is grabbed by you and in addition three months bank statements, three months credit card statements, not six months and six months or one year and one year. We don't need tax returns. I don't want any rental agreements we don't need voided checks, we don't need nothing. I need the application, the application, bank statements, plus credit card statements. That's it, three months of each. Now if they don't take credit cards and they only take cash or checks, then what we want is we want six months bank statements. That's it along with the application. They've got to fill the application out and sign it. If there's partners, there's two spots for it, and then you have the partner put it on their name on there also. I don't know how much more clear I could be than that. This isn't rocket science. It's a very simple process. The easier you make it out here, and the more that you are in control of your client out here, the less your client will fall apart al along the way with you. These deals should close in 10 days or less, at least 85% of the time. And if they're not closing, it's because you haven't done your job right in here. You need to make sure you do your job. Find a client that's interested, have them fill out an application, get the bank statements, get the credit card statements. Three months of each or six months bank statements in the event they don't take credit cards. Once you've handed those in, you can expect 24 to 48 hour turnaround. Don't be calling after three hours. There's no need to call. You can easily text. You know I'll give you that number. I already have if you're watching this. Or you can email me and say, hey, did you get everything? I will answer you. I'm not like these other pricks in this industry. So please just go ahead and get me this data. I'll get you an answer in 24 to 48 hours. Once that approval or that denial comes in, it's your responsibility immediately to get it back to the borrower. It just makes sense. It's called customer service. So what I do, and if you do this, this will work for you. Once you get an approval, let's say it's an approval from me and I email it to you with the contract. What you're going to do is you're going to clean the body of your email and the HTML portion of it and you're going to forward that to your borrower. And you're going to call your borrower and you're going to say, I got you approved. I emailed it to you. I don't have time right now to talk to you. Please review it and let's talk afterwards. 
When they say things like, hey, how much did I get? Hey, what's the factor rate? Or hey, what's the interest rate? You know, how long is the term? So da, da, da. Just say, listen, just do me a favor, please. Just review it and then give me a yell and let's go over any concerns you might have or in the event you want to proceed forward, get it signed and get it back to me and let's get this money to you as quickly as possible. Leave it at that. It's the simplest way to do it. So, you've delivered the contract. Now when the contract comes back to you, you don't call me, you just immediately forward it to me. That's all. Just a hot box situation. You gather the ball, throw the ball to home plate. I'm standing right there. Give me the ball. I'm ready. So we get the ball. At that point, what we're going to do is we're going to call the landlord. Some of you out there might say to me, well, why do you do that? Well, we want to make sure they're still in business, number one. Number two, we want to make sure they're in business the life of the loan. So in the event that for some reason they don't have but one month left on the, on the lease of their restaurant or their hotel or their, their bowling alley and they're leasing the building, then more than likely we're not going to lend to them unless, of course, they have another lease signed elsewhere and they're moving out. We'll still lend to them in that case. So once the contract comes in, send it to me. We contact the landlord, we ask him three questions, it typically takes about a minute, and when we're done, at that point, what we do is, we wire the funds to the borrower, okay? That typically takes somewhere between 12 and 24 hours once we've done the landlord uh, uh, sweep to make sure that the people actually are cleared and still going to be in business with their business. So once we fund them, you can expect your money within 24 to 48 hours after we've funded the borrower. We'll certainly be in touch with you along the way. Thank you. Hello, this is Brett Martin. What I want to go over is a term in particular that you need to pay attention to. The people who sell the money in this industry, the frontline people, the ones that are out on the streets or on the phones, out there pitching businesses, or the merchant, whatever you want to call them, is, is called an ISO or an independent sales organization. Let me tell you why the contracts that you'll sign with any of these lenders out there that you'll do business with, to include myself, call these guys independent. Call you independent. The main reason is for liability sakes. In the days of having loan officers in-house especially in this industry, seem to have gone by the wayside. And the number one reason would be because of liability. So what you're going to do is you're going to get 1099 at the end of the year. If you haven't been 1099 before, then what that means, just so you know, is you're basically going to be an entity in and of itself, a sales organization. You're going to be independent of us or anyone else that you sign a contract with. And every one of us will make you sign a contract. Simple as that. So don't get all freaked out about it. All our contracts are typically the same. It's not as though any of us are trying to screw you. We're trying to get you to do business with us. Everyone out there will sign you up. The question is, is how will you be treated? And that's the reason why I started my own organization in this industry just under five years ago is because I started to say to myself, these people aren't being treated right. I'm not being treated right. And in the end, that's been why I'm winning out over a lot of the other lenders out there. In fact, 99 out of 100 of them. Believe me, there's a lot of fly-by-night companies out there. So I hope you understand what an independent sales organization is and the fact that you will be the owner of one. And I can certainly show you how to set that up. You don't need to go through a bunch of rigmarole to do so. And with my organization, I'm the only organization in the entire industry that will allow you to, to, to market my business name and you can use my flyers and my business card templates. No problem. So I want to go over marketing just a little bit more for you. It's one thing that's really interesting to me in regards to the questions that I've gotten in the last just right under five years is inevitably people call me over and over and over again. 
how do I market this? How do I get this out there on the streets? How can I get this to these people? Well, the first thing you got to understand is that there are people out there saying, how do I get access to this? How the hell can I find money? Where can I find money today? How can I survive? How do I keep my 30-year-old business going? How do I keep my second-generation company going that I inherited? Third-generation company going that I inherited? How do I get, get money from my corporation that I can't get money from a bank for? You know, how the hell am I going to make it today? How am I going to make my ends meet? You see, because what's interesting is most of you are coming to me for a job via my Craigslist ad, and you're broke also. Now, what you got to understand is, is I've just described about 90% of America, to include the business owners. What we've done since about 2000 is we've expunged all the income we could out of our residences, there's no equity left. And now what we're allowing business owners to do is rape their business. Not unlike a mortgage. This is just like a refinance. How much money do you qualify for? It's all based off how successful they are. If they're not real successful, they don't get much money. If they're real successful, they get a lot of money. Good stuff. You get a lot of commission. That's wonderful. So let's talk about the markets for a second again. I mentioned earlier that you can call on banks to get the turndowns. What's interesting to me about people is they stand on the other end of the phone, as I haven't met but maybe 10% of my employees, and they say to me, and for all intents and purposes, you know, why would they give me a, a turndown? Well, because they're sick and tired of telling people no. That's what they do all day. So if you went back to the 50s and the 60s, the 40s, the 70s, the 80s, what happened to us that have been around for years, myself, since I've been selling since the late 70s, 80s, the 90s, and now the 2000s, is we built a network. And that sometimes takes time. How much time? You know, just because you need money right now doesn't mean that you, your client doesn't need money. So if you're desperate, there's no reason in hell why you can't make money fast at this as long as you get yourself out and start to market and you can do it on day one. You don't need a huge education to do this. What you need to understand is that we sell money, we've got it for sale, in a world where right now business owners can't find it. So you ask me, where do I go to sell this and I can tell you, first thing you need to do is climb the tallest peak you've got around your place and just start screaming, I've got money. I've got money for sale for businesses. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your local neighborhood dry cleaner, tell the store owner you stop in. If you go to two restaurants this week, tell both business owners that you have money for sale. Watch what happens, please, just watch. Or maybe you do what I've had to teach some people to do, and that is, why don't you go out and interview people and say, Hey, if I got in this industry, would you be willing to get some money from me? Because I loan money. Or even go one step farther and say, I'm thinking about getting into this industry, Mr. Business Owner. And I'd like to ask you, am I out of my mind? Or can you get money from a bank? Go out and have them tell you what they've been telling me now for the last almost five years. And all my ISOs, nearly 3,000 or right at 3,000 of them is, that we have no options as to where to get money. So understand that the moment you get access to this industry, you're part of something that just doesn't exist out there, and that is that we're letting people have money. We're, we're lending money. We're, we're getting money to people, as opposed to the banks trying to figure out how not to get money to them. Because that's not how they make money. They make money by charging fees. That's how they make money. I mean, we all know that. This isn't rocket science. This is what banking's gotten down to. The only people that get money from banks are the people who don't need money. That's why the wealthy continues to get wealthier. So the market is exponential. You can go to banks and you can get their turndowns. Why? Because they don't want to keep telling their customers no. Referral sources, networks, a term I used five minutes ago, 
you can actually be in a situation where you build a relationship with a loan officer at the bank in the commercial side of the branch at Key Bank, U.S. Bank, Wells Fargo. You know, you name it, you've got banks around you. I've got them up here in the Pacific Northwest. We've got them back in New York. They're everywhere. You can go in and use the banks as a referral source. We have flyers and we have business card templates also. You can print some off at your local printer and you can go call on banks. We make you look professional that way. You can also be part of our website. So that way if they call, you know, want to know, you know, who's Joe, who's Bill, who's Hank, they're, they're calling on me, who's Marsha, who's Betty, then I can go ahead and say, hey, that person's with us, it's part of our organization. So you can build a referral source with banks. In addition, you can go to a chamber meeting. Many of you might say, you know, I don't have time. Well, all you have to do is wait for your turn on Tuesday or Monday morning or Thursday morning and just watch how fast this happens. When they hand you the mic, you stand there, some of you might have to turn around because you're nervous, and you just say, you know, my name is Brett Martin and I have business money for sale. You know, it's kind of like the old saying, E.F. Hutton, if you've been around long enough, when E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. So, we're not selling stationery, we're not giving away tickets for a raffle to our restaurant, we don't sell roofing, we don't sell gutters, we're not landscapers, we don't sell paint, we don't sell car, but we sell money to the businesses out there that are providing these services to the public. So we're really a hierarchy scenario. In the event you want to be a part of an organization or an industry that allows you a step above everyone else, we're the ones at the top of the pyramid. We sell money. So that's what you say in the Chamber of Commerce meeting to, you know, 40 business owners in Tallahassee or Chicago or Portland, Oregon, they don't care where it's at, they need money. Their business has to stay in business. They're entrepreneurs, that's what they do. So these 40 business owners afterwards are going to come up to you and say, you know what, I need money for my stationary business. I need money for my landscaping business. I need money for my roofing company. I mean, listen to these things. A roofing company is a company that's seasonal. A business that's a landscaping company is seasonal. A hotel is a seasonal business in most cases. A bed and breakfast is seasonal in most cases. So they go through huge ebb and flow and they need money. People have a tough time managing their flesh. Trust me, they have a tough time managing their money. So just rest assured, if worst case scenario, before you get in this industry, you have to go out and just call on a couple business owners and say, hey, I'm thinking about getting in this business this nut up in Portland, Oregon named Brett Martin's telling me there's a bunch of people hitting out of the park in this industry. You know, are, do you guys really need business money? Do you really need money? Because from my perspective, I'm the only one in the country that's broke. Everyone else is rich. So I would think that nobody really needs this money, right? So go out, interview a couple friends, interview family, interview business owners, ask them, you know, do you need money? So a great resource to get back to this marketing wise is banks, chamber of commerce, and rotaries. Okay, huge market, it's just referral sources, that's all they are. Trust me, this is the only product you're ever going to sell on the face of the earth where you get an instantaneous response. Back when I owned one of the larger mortgage com companies in the country, I'd go in and tell people I owned a mortgage company, we do loans, you know, we might get a call or two. This is a whole different product. This is like adult heroin. It's out on the streets, it's available through this industry. Very few companies, very few people know about this industry. So get to those business owners via your chamber of commerce, get to the banks, to the loan office, officers for turndowns, sorry for stuttering there. Uh, another, another industry out there is you've got lead sources. They do the work for you. All you have to do is pay them. It's $2.99 for 100 business owners that are leads. Let me tell you something about these leads, okay? They're, they're almost edible. They'll fund your family and fund you that quickly. They're almost edible. They're like food, okay? A business owner is actually going to be called by the telemarketing firm and they're going to say, hey, we've got money for sale. One of this little teeny 19 to 23 year old, you know, bubble-headed bleach blondes named Bridget that's going to Weber State 
is going to call your business owner because you're incapable of it because you're still trying to figure out whether or not you should get in the industry or not or whether or not the business owner needs this. She's going to do your job and the phone's going to ring and it's going to come right to your cell phone. You're going to pick it up. You're going to go, hello. And he or she is going to go, hi, my name's Joe. I own a restaurant in Florida and I just got a call. You guys are, are doing business loans? And you're going to go, yeah. I mean, this is mana from heaven. You'd have to be an idiot not to be part of this. All right? And then you'd have to be more of an idiot to do what 60 to 70% of my people do all day long, calling me, emailing me, texting me, trying to figure out, where do I go? What do I do? Well, this is what you do. Stand at the top of a peak and start yelling. I got money for sale. In a world where money doesn't exist anymore. Rest assured, these leads work, as do these banks for turndowns, as do the Chamber of Commerce, as do the Rotaries. You can get UCC filing base data uh, anywhere you want with the states. I can show you how to do that, no problem. Your local uh, uh, corporation divisions at the state level have UCC filings on all companies out there. The biggest difficulty you face with the UCC filing or database is that they've already got a UCC loan of some sort, whether it's a factor loan from a factory company or you know maybe from the merchant cash advance industry. Myself, personally, I'm not into sloppy seconds. So once you get to know me, you understand I have absolutely no problem letting people know out there I've got money for sale. I'd prefer not to be someone that's in a scenario where I'm the third, fourth, fifth in line. I really don't have time to be in a scenario where all people are going to do all day is, is consider, con, consider me someone who's a slut or another me too. It's not who I am. You know, I call from the, the highest mountains. I've got money for sale, as should you. And if you do, this industry will pay you. And if you're in a situation where you lack money, you can get to your retirement goals and get, them, get there very quickly. Thank you for joining me.